uh, to get from from the the loss to the acceptance and and able to move on in your life. Ask the pastor. And Jacqueline's from North Carolina, and she wants to know this. She says, what does the Bible say about our seasons of grieving? And why is it so um, devastating when you're going through those seasons of grieving? How about that, Pastor? Well, seasons of grieving, uh, I think about two places in the Bible in particular that talk about mourning or grieving. Uh, Jesus, in the Sermon on the Mount, yeah, blessed are those who mourn, for mm -hmm. they shall be comforted. I think about Ecclesiastes chapter 3, where it says there's a season uh, for everything, a season to, to uh, grieve, a season to rejoice. Uh, but there's... Um, it's important uh, because it, psychology tells us today that that there's a process that we go through through grieving. Mm -hmm. There's the the five stages of grief, which would be uh, uh, denial, anger, um, uh, depression. Um, you know, I, I forget that I actually uh, had those uh, bargaining, bargaining, mm -hmm. depression, and then acceptance. You have to go through this process to come out on the far end. Now, uh, I always recommend. Uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, if you look at 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 through 7, the word comfort is mentioned mm -hmm. 10 times wow. in those verses. But interspersed through those 10 mentions of comfort is uh, affliction, suffering, and patient enduring. Mm. So there is a process that you go through, but you have to have God involved in that process uh, to get from, from the, the loss to the acceptance and, be, and able to move on in your life. Amen. Good word on that, Pastor. How about that, Pastor Gregory? We started dealing about those seasons of grieving. I appreciate it where Rich Hall started from. Uh, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. That's in uh, Matthew 5, uh, verse uh, 4. In Matthew 5, verse 4, it talks about the fact that, that people grieve and that grief is not necessarily a bad thing. Sometimes we grieve because we find out that we are guilty, that we are not in the right place, that we are being separated because of our sense of, of uh, uh, sin, the things that are holding on to us. So it, it's important to understand that grieving in and of itself isn't necessarily a bad thing. But we need to understand that grieving has a solution, and that solution is Jesus Christ himself. In 61, Isaiah 61, verse 2, Jesus came to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the day of vengeance of our God, and to comfort all that mourn, we will mourn. Stuff happens that hurts. Stuff happens that uh, we feel is not right. Stuff happens because we don't get our way. Stuff happens in our life. And because of that, there will be mourning. But our answer is to look to Jesus. Amen. Making that real there, Pastor. Pastor Hughes, I know this fits in your professional background somewhat, too. Yes, sir. Particularly when you talk about being so devastating. Can you hit on that side of it when that grieving, when can it get to where it can be overwhelming for a person? Oftentimes, when we, when we think about grieving, it becomes heavy because the person that we lost meant something dear to us. Mm. Um, like if you hear the death of a stranger, though you may pray for that family, it doesn't hit you personally because you had no connection to them. But one of the things that's critical that we must do, even though it's hard to, we have to let go. Mm. We have to let go of the person. They have transitioned on, they're no longer here. So how, how I would deal with it is cherish the memories that you had with the person instead of focusing on the loss. And then live your life in a way that would bring them honor, that, 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 would, um, that they would be able to be proud of. And so now going into Isaiah 61 and 1, where Jesus came, he said, and he hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Mm. So Jesus came to deal with that brokenheartedness. The Bible says, cast all your cares upon me for I care mm. for you. And then there's a transition in Isaiah 61 and 3 where it says he will give you the oil of joy for mourning mm -hmm. and a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So when you turn it over to God, there's a transformation. If you trust in God and let him deal with you, not let people dictate to you when you should be over the grieving, but let the Holy Spirit just work through it. Some good comforting words on that, Pastor Hughes. Excellent. How about that, Pastor Rosa, when we talk about this dealing with these seasons? Well, I think uh, 
one phrase that is really comforting is this too will pass. Mm. If you realize that this is a time, uh, a time ultimately allowed by God and uh, hopefully therefore can be comforted by God if you'll turn to him and look to him. You see, uh, Jesus understands. And, and I think if you can imagine, sit back and just imagine that Jesus cares for you like he cared for Martha and Mary in the loss of their brother uh, uh, Lazarus. Mm -hmm. And in that, you see, uh, it says that Mary was common in John chapter 11. You can read that whole chapter. But it says, Lord, if thou had been here, my brother had not died. Mm -hmm. And so she was in deep grief about this whole thing, uh, you know, and ultimately blaming the Lord for not really following through and doing what she thought he should have done. And Jesus said, uh, Jesus therefore saw her weeping and the Jews also weeping, uh, which came to her. Uh, he groaned in the spirit mm. and was troubled. So he was touched by the feelings of her infirmities. He, he was really uh, moved. And it says, uh, where have you laid him? And they said, come and see. And on the way, it says the shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. Mm -hmm. So Jesus knew exactly what he was going to do. He knew he was going to raise Lazarus from the dead, but he was touched by her heart and by their hearts of, of crying. And he wept also. And I think if you can imagine that in your mind and think about that, meditate upon that, it will cause a relief, a swaying of your uh, grief away from you because you know that he does care. Amen. Praise God. Good. Dr. Turner, we'll let you wrap this one up for us. Yeah. Um, I'm going to get transparent. My father died. And I had a chance to uh, preach my father's funeral. Mm -hmm. So I never really grieved. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting at work one day, and the last things they played at his funeral were the taps. Mm -hmm. When I heard the taps, I froze. And they said they came and got me out of my seat mm -hmm. and took me out because it finally hit me that my father was gone. Wow. The reason why it's important to go through the grief season so that you don't take it out on others. There could be outbursts, mm -hmm. changes in personality, eating habits can change. So it's important to grieve so that you can get better. I'm just going to say it like the easiest way. And the Bible talks about it, it says, put on a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. How can I do that? That's why I'm glad we have homegoing services at our funerals. COVID kind of snatched that away. But what we do it in our in our funerals are we celebrate that this person has left us, but they no longer have to suffer with the stuff that we do down here on earth because they went to be with the Lord. Amen. Hey everyone. Hope you enjoyed the video. To see more like this, be sure to hit the subscribe button below. Get all the latest content from TCT Ministries. We'd love to pray alongside you for God's blessings in your life. So you can email your prayer requests to prayer at tct.tv or click the link below and submit your request at tct.tv. God bless you and thank you for watching.